All right, hello everybody. This is Zach's 399. Now, I I love my cat and I love my dogs, even though they're lazy. Hi, Ziana. Two of my favorite pets now that I've ever owned in my entire life have to be this little girl. How you doing, Roxy? How you doing? How you doing, Roxy? She's so adorable and she's growing fast. And uh, besides her, Rocky here is definitely a favorite. How you doing, Rocky? So this video here, I'm going to be showing you guys, any of you guys that are thinking about getting a bearded dragon, just starting out with a bearded dragon, wanting to know what you need to buy for your bearded dragon before you get one, right when you get one, I'm going to try to make a video to help you out, maybe not give you the absolute diehard facts in every situation, but I want to show you what's worked for me, what I started with, and how I've got my bearded dragons where they are, and uh, what I've bought and everything. I want to discuss everything that I've learned in the two plus years, two and a half years I've had uh, Rocky now. So we're going to go ahead and talk about that in this video, and I'll be back right after this. All right, everybody, welcome back. As we look at Rocky here in his enclosure, I want to go ahead and tell you a few things about bearded dragons that I've learned in the two and a half years since we bought Rocky. Now, first of all, bearded dragons make absolutely phenomenal pets. Uh, they're great for families, especially families with like young children, uh, just because they're really gentle. Uh, and bearded dragons always seem to just love attention. So any kids that are going to be looking or, you know, talking to the bearded dragons or whatever, bearded dragons are going to love that kind of attention. So I can't recommend a bearded dragon as a fantastic pet enough. You just want to make sure that before you buy a bearded dragon, you get his enclosure and everything set up correctly so that when you bring your bearded dragon home, whether it be a baby or whether you're getting an adult or something like that, you want to make sure that he's going to be healthy. He's going to have a nice, safe uh, environment uh, in your home. You also want to make sure that you know you're going to have enough love for him and enough time to care for him each and every day. So, Rocky here, uh, one of the best pets I've ever had. And the thing is, is I never imagined a bearded dragon, you know, being such a great pet. But they really are. They love attention, they love uh, being, you know, pet, they love sitting on your chest and just, you know, uh, just being with you, whether, you know, Rocky a lot of times will climb up on my shoulder. Uh, he always wants out of his cage. And uh, one thing you want to do, though, before you buy any bearded dragon, whether it be a baby or whether it be an adult like this, you know, whether you're in the pet store or you're looking at a bearded dragon from, you know, somebody breeding him, perhaps. You just want to look at them in the cage and you want to make sure that, you know, they're alert. Make sure they look, you know, like they're healthy. Anything that, you know, kind of sticks out as far as any deformities, you know, maybe a cut off or a bitten off tail or uh, maybe a breeder's actually had too many uh, bearded dragons in the same cage and they might have nicks or uh, deformed legs or, you know, bite marks on them or something like that. You want to stay away from those kind of bearded dragons. You want to be looking for things like, you know, parasites and, uh, you know, any kind of sores that might be leaking, any kind of pus or gunk, uh, any kind of buildup on the eyes, nose, or mouth uh, are also things you want to try to avoid uh, when you buy your bearded dragon. You know, basically just use common sense. But really just look for them, see how alert they are, especially when they're babies. You want to make sure that they're not just laying there looking lethargic. You want to make sure they look alert, make sure they look like they're active. Uh, even if they're an adult, you don't want them just uh, looking lethargic because it could be something really bad. I mean, it might be something completely natural like brumation, but it also could be a bad sign. So I would stay away from any bearded dragon that looks like it has any of these problems. Now, bearded dragons do usually get up to about 16 
17 inches all the way up to about 22 inches in length. So they can get pretty big. And uh, I would generally recommend if you have young kids to get a bearded dragon uh, at least as a juvenile, at least 10 inches or bigger. Just because if you're going to have young kids and stuff handling it, it has a better chance of surviving and not getting sick or parasites or anything like that. Uh, and it's a little bit uh, easier to handle as well because the really young bearded dragons are really fast and move around a lot. So, let's go ahead and talk about the terrarium that you buy. Now, before you buy a bearded dragon, I always recommend you get its terrarium set up first. Get everything ready, make sure the temperatures are right, make sure that you've bought adequate stuff and, and everything's set up before you go out and get your bearded dragon. Can't recommend this enough. The last thing you want to do is listen to the person in the pet store, you know, the salesperson, uh, get that cute little bearded dragon and not know, you know, not have anything to put it in. And then you end up buying like one of those kits that the salesperson in the pet store sells you. And a lot of those kits that you buy in the pet stores are especially like by brands like uh, Zilla. They're nothing but garbage. I mean, the terrarium itself might be okay, but you know, a lot of the stuff in there, the lighting and stuff like that, it's just stuff you don't want and it can cause your bearded dragon to uh, wind up really sick, uh, wind up going blind, or a lot of other health problems that you really don't want for your new bearded dragon. So what I recommend, for a baby bearded dragon under about 8 to 10 inches in total length, you can start off with a 20 gallon terrarium. Okay. Now you really don't want to be buying like a brand new aquarium, I would rather uh, advise you to buy a terrarium because you don't want like a big plastic lid on the top and not only that terrariums have more space for your bearded dragon to run around where aquariums typically are taller and offer more you know more uh, height to actually look at the fish swimming around terrariums give you more space typically uh, for the bearded dragon to move around in they're also typically not quite as high so you're going to be able to get your lighting down closer to the bearded dragon which is exactly what you want so I would advice trying to get a terrarium whether you get one used like I did on Craigslist or whether you get one brand new a terrarium is the way to go so 20 gallons is my recommended size for a baby bearded dragon but realize that once it gets bigger uh, like Rocky did here they can grow to this size in under a year so once they get to be an adult bearded dragon like Rocky is you want to get at least a 40 gallon terrarium and my advice is 60 gallons or bigger. This uh, terrarium here, I believe it's either 60 or 65 gallons. And this is, uh, you know, plenty big for Rocky, even though I'm sure he would like more space. Okay. So once you got the terrarium, you need to make sure you get a lid for it. Okay. As you can see, this lid here is, I believe this lid is for uh, an aquarium. And it has a hooded light here and stuff like that. But the one thing you want to make sure that you have for your terrarium or aquarium, whatever, if you get in an aquarium, make sure you take that big plastic lid off. You want uh, heat to be able to circulate through your terrarium and you want to get a wire mesh top as I have here. So this one actually folds in the middle and I actually have it open right now, but this one folds over and comes over this top here. It's a little bit big uh, for what I want, but you want to make sure that it's metal because you're going to be placing a heat lamp on top. And this is what it looks like closed. So as you can see, the gap here is a little bit big uh, for this particular terrarium, but it does cover everything uh, and that's really all you want. So it's pretty close and close enough for this particular uh, terrarium. Uh, Rocky's not going to be able to climb out and get out or anything like that. So make sure it's metal. Uh, all the way around because you're going to be wanting to place a heat lamp on top to provide heat uh, for your terrarium in most situations okay so mesh metal top very very important we want to be able to let uh, you know the air circulate through his terrarium and come back out the heat come back out uh, that kind of thing so now that you've got your terrarium and you've got your mesh metal uh, ventilated uh, lid now you want to look at lighting Okay, so for lighting on a terrarium, you want to uh, get, my advice is to not go with any kind of coils or compact bulbs. Uh, they're not recommended, and I guess studies have shown that they can cause eye problems and 
uh, a reduction in appetite, which you definitely don't want for your bearded dragon. You definitely need them to be eating and have a good appetite. So what I've used for Rocky ever since we got him is the Reptisun 10.0 UV bulb. Now these bulbs uh, typically run around $50 in pet stores. You can get them a little cheaper on websites uh, like Amazon.com for example. But the UVB uh, Reptisun 10.0 uh, is my recommendation. It's a two bulb and you can also go with like an Arcadia 12% bulb. Those, are, those two bulbs there are known to provide uh, some of the best UVB uh, lighting uh, and rays for your bearded dragon and recommended that you go with that. I personally recommend the Reptisun uh, 10.0 UV bulb and you'll look at it right here in my tank. You'll see that that light is right there and it runs. You want to get one that runs about as long as your terrarium, as close to it as you can because you want to make sure that no matter where in your tank your bearded dragon is at, they have that UVB light. Okay, so you also want to make sure that that UVB light is up and under any kind of, you know, mesh metal uh, lid or anything that you have. You want it to be inside the tank with a bearded dragon. Another thing you want to do is you want to go ahead and make sure that at the bearded dragon's highest point where he can bask, he's no more than about eight inches away from that UVB bulb. So a lot of things to consider there when you buy your bulb and when you place it. All right, guys, what you're going to want to do for your fluorescent bulb, uh, like your UVB Reptisun 10.0 that I, I recommend, or the Arcadia 12% if you just decide to go with that, is you're going to want to get a fluorescent bulb holder, a really lightweight one. And places that sell those here in the United States are like uh, Lowe's or Home Depot. And they're typically going to cost you between $10 and $20. Make sure you buy one of the lightweight ones. Don't buy one of those, you know, 20 pound ones or whatever that are a lot more expensive, you want to make sure they're lightweight and they're going to hold the length of the, uh, you know, like the Reptisun bulb that you're going to buy. So know what bulb you're getting, buy the bulb first or, or order the bulb first, that way you know how long it is. You want to also measure your terrarium uh, first as well, the length of it. And so for if your terrarium is like, you know, 45 inches, you don't want to buy a 48 inch long bulb because you're not going to be able to get it inside. So if your terrarium will hold a 48 inch uh, in length UVB bulb, then that's what you want to buy because you want to try to get it over the most territory of your terrarium that you can. But just go with the, the longest one that you can. Uh, I believe the Reptisun comes in like 48, 36, 24, and 18 uh, inch lengths. So you should be able to buy one that's going to fit your terrarium, you know, the best that you can. So then you're going to take that bulb and you're going to want to buy a, uh, a fluorescent bulb holder like I'll put some uh, examples down in the description below uh, for some of these so you can take a look at these. So buy one of these, they're pretty inexpensive if you buy them at a hardware store and just make sure you're buying the right length. So once you get that, once you get that fluorescent bulb holder for your tank, you're going to want to hang it up. Now one of the best things to do to hang it up inside a terrarium where you want inside the terrarium, remember you want it inside the terrarium uh, because you don't want it having to go through uh, any kind of lid or any kind of mesh top or anything like that. You want your bearded dragon to get 100% of that UVB ray. So you want it to go inside the tank and I would just mount it on like the back wall of the tank and you can use like command hooks uh, to hold it up as long as your uh, fluorescent bulb holder isn't that uh, heavy. It should hold it up just fine. Now the UVB lights you want to try to uh, change those out about every six months if you can. I'll be honest and let you know I've been going about eight or nine months uh, between changing them out and Rocky seems to be doing just fine. So if you, if you have to go a little bit longer than six months on changing those out for new ones then, uh, then you can do that. Just don't wait for the UVB bulb to burn out before you buy a new one or you're definitely waiting too long. All right. So now we've got the UVB lighting inside the tank for our bearded dragon. Now we need to worry about heat. Now heat you typically want to have uh, for a bearded, baby bearded dragon or an adult, you always want a cool side of the tank and you want a hot basking side of the tank. Don't put your basking area in like the middle because you want a cool side and a warm side and the ability for the bearded dragon to go where it wants based on, you know, its needs. For example, if a bearded dragon, you know, eats a lot of bugs or something like that that you fed them, they're typically going to go up in their basking area 
under the heat so that they can better digest the food that they've eaten. So they'll know what's best for them, but you do you want to supply them with a cool side and a warm side. And typically the cool side is where you'll put their fresh vegetables and their bath water, uh, you know, or their drinking water, whatever you have. Now, if you live in a really humid state, like out on the you know east coast or whatever, if the humidity is pretty high, you probably don't want to leave water standing in the tank all day. Uh, because it can cause too much humidity and that can cause your bearded dragon to get really sick. So you don't want to have too much humidity in your uh, tank. But I live in a really dry state here in Idaho. The humidity is really low, like 20 to 30 percent. So if you live in a state out here like this uh, or Arizona or somewhere like that, you can leave water in their tank all day. And typically they won't drink the water out of there. They'll just kind of splash around in it and it helps with their hydration but sometimes they will drink out of the water that you supply. So I need to give Rocky some more water here. So what I would recommend if you have a bearded dragon and you live in a really humid state is maybe just applying, getting one of these bath, uh, like reptile bathtubs as well, like this and give it, putting fresh water in there like for an hour or two a day and then remove it just so you don't have too much humidity build up in your tank. But here where I live, like I say in a dry state, we leave water uh, in his tank all the time. And I'm gonna go ahead and make it a little bit deeper than that. Just make sure they got fresh, clean water every single day. And again, make sure it's on the cool side of the tank. So as far as temperatures, Temperatures are very important for a bearded dragon, and I'm going to go ahead and go over, you know, what I use Fahrenheit. So if you live in uh, the Europe or somewhere like that, and you go by Celsius, just go ahead and convert the temperatures that I give you in Fahrenheit to whatever you use, Celsius or whatever. So for the warm side of the tank, uh, it's different based on if you have a young bearded dragon or if you have a adult bearded dragon like Rocky here. So if you have an adult bearded dragon, uh, temperatures are recommended in the basking area of a between. 90 and I'd say 98 uh, definitely under a hundred you don't want it any warmer than a hundred for an adult But for a juvenile bearded dragon you want to have it probably about 102 to 105 And for a little teeny baby bearded dragon under like, you know six or seven inches in total length You want to have it 105 to 110 degrees Fahrenheit in the basking area very very important And for all bearded dragons no matter what size the cool side of the tank during the day You want it between 80 and 85 degrees you don't want it getting too cool during the day. You want it to be a little bit warmer. Uh, and at night, uh, you want to actually turn off all the lights, the UVB lights, uh, the heating lights, and everything like that. You want it totally dark in there. And you want it to be, uh, you know, it can get cooler because bearded dragons are used to it being cooler, you know, in the Australian deserts where they're from. And at night, they're used to cool temperatures. So it can drop all the way down to, I'd say, 65 degrees Fahrenheit at night. If it gets any cooler in your house, I think this is going to be pretty rare uh, for most people. I think most people's house probably stays at least 65 at night, even during the winter. But if it does drop cooler than that, you might want to think about getting like a, a heat bulb. Never use any kind of heat, uh, like heat pads under your terrarium. Never use any kind of heat rocks, anything like that, because bearded dragons have a very sensitive uh, underbelly and their underbelly here uh, that if that gets on like a heat rock or whatever that can scald them and really hurt them So you don't want to use any kind of heating uh, Devices on the under on the ground no heating rocks no heating pads nothing like that So if you're gonna supply need to supply heat like at night, you also don't want any kind of light Okay, don't get any kind of you know like blue lights or red lights or anything like that for the nighttime You want it to be totally dark so they can sleep best so if it is going to be getting cooler than like 65 degrees at night where you live uh, again don't buy any kind of color lights any kind of lights that are putting any kind of light out at all uh, again don't use any kind of heating pads or heating rocks or nothing like that the only thing i would recommend for that to make sure that your tank doesn't get below 65 degrees is consider buying maybe a uh, ceramic heat emitter it's a chE and you can buy those in pet stores or like online they're relatively cheap but you want to make sure they don't put any kind of light out uh, I believe they're like black in color. I've never had to use one, but that would be my only recommendation if you do have a terrarium that's gonna be getting less than 65 degrees at night. Okay, so for your heat bulb, your basking light, uh, what I would recommend is you can buy these more expensive uh, heat lamps right here. You wanna make sure that they're all metal, no plastic. You can buy these in the pet store. 
uh, but they're pretty spendy. We bought a terrarium that came with one. That's why we're using one. So maybe a little bit better. But you can certainly go to like Lowe's and, and uh, Home Depot, those hardware kind of stores, and just buy like a uh, a work light like this. I think this is like 10 bucks at Lowe's. And just make sure it's all aluminum or metal. Make sure there's, you know, no plastic except maybe up here at the top or whatever. But this part here definitely needs to make sure it's all aluminum or something like that that's not going to, you know, melt. So you can buy this and put it, your bulb inside of here. And for the bulb itself, you can either use a a basking bulb which you can find at pet stores uh, or you know like uh, websites like Amazon or whatever or you can use just a regular standard you know 60 or 75 or 100 watt house bulb uh, to supply your heat in the summertime uh, I believe you can get away with like a 60 watt bulb it'll probably keep your terrarium warm enough depending on how cool you keep your house uh, you know, during the winter time, you might want to actually get a basking bulb, and you're going to have to experiment with your terrarium in your own house to, to figure out, you know, what kind of wattage you need for a basking bulb. Uh, I know we use, I believe, a, I believe we use a hundred watt basking bulb in the winter, and then during the summer we can use like a 75 watt regular standard uh, household bulb in here to provide his heat in his basking area. So. I can't recommend enough staying away from these $60, you know, basking bulb uh, things like here. I've seen them. You can buy one if you want to spend the money, but why buy that when you can buy something simple like this for like 10 or 12 bucks at your hardware store and it's going to work just as well. Uh, I mean, it's not going to, you know, this isn't going to provide any more kind of heat or anything like that than this will, and you're saving yourself 40 or 50 bucks in most situations. All right. So that is what I would recommend for your, your, your basking or your heat. And you're just going to have to experiment away from it. All right, and just stay away from like brand names for like your bulbs from like Zilla and stuff like that. Don't buy Zilla anything except if it's just like a tank. Uh, I would recommend like Zoomit or many of the other brands that have better ratings online uh, for your basking bulb. Okay. To measure temperatures properly in your tank, you want to get yourself a infrared uh, thermometer gun like this. These are relatively cheap. I'll provide a link down. Uh, under $20 you can expect to buy one of these for and they work great for getting precise measurements of your temperature. Never go with a stick on gauges or th you know temperature readings uh, that you can stick on the side of the tank. They're very inaccurate. They can be off by more than 40 degrees and here you can see I can properly measure the cool side and the warm side of my tank and make sure it's set up correctly. Very very important. So now we know that we're not using any kind of heat pad or heat rocks or anything like that. We have our UVB uh, covering our entire tank and then we have our heat bath. This is really important. The next important thing in your terrarium is going to be the substrate. What are you going to use for your substrate? There's like all kinds of different sands and you know uh, things like that that you can use. You got uh, carpet that you can use, reptile carpet, which is really good. I would stay away from the sand, uh, especially if you have a young bearded dragon, because what will happen is they will tend to eat that sand and it can get inside them and it can cause impaction. Now bearded dragons have a really small, uh, short intestinal tract, but it's really narrow. So like any kind of sand or anything like that or anything uh, hard like that can get inside of them and cause a really deadly uh, situation called impaction where their intestines can get blocked and that can lead to the death of a bearded dragon very quickly. So it's not worth buying anything unsafe. I mean, if you have to, you can use like paper towels even uh, or, uh, Paper towels are easy to clean up, and I'll be honest with you, your bearded dragons are going to make a mess. They are going to poop and pee and stuff like that all over the place. They're going to get into your vegetables and spread them all over the tank. They are messy. They're going to get in your bath water and splash it all over. Uh, there's no way you're going to have a neat bearded dragon. They're all going to be really, really messy. So expect that and expect to have to clean uh, your rocks and your logs and whatever else you put in your tank. Like right now, we used to have a nice log for him to lay on. Uh, but we're actually cleaning that right now, and that's why it's not in his tank. But for substrate, my best recommendation is to use like a flexible tile like we have here. Just make sure that it's, you know, uh, not going to melt. Make sure it has the ability to uh, get up to, the, you know, 120 degrees without melting or anything like that. And then just cut it and cut it to fit your tank. And then that, the reason I recommend this is because it's very, very easy to clean. It's much easier to clean than like the reptile carpet or something like that. 
uh, and you're not wasting a lot of money buying paper towels all the time, which can also get shredded and messy uh, from your bearded dragon. So this is my recommendation is uh, this kind of tile, the flexible tile that you can buy and cut and shape to your terrarium size. Uh, it's very inexpensive and it's very easily cleaned. All right. So uh, now that I've went over the substrate, I've went over the heat, I've went over the UVB and I've went over the tank, uh, you know, what kind of tank. I've also covered the lid for your bearded dragon. Let's go ahead and talk about your diet. What should you be feeding your bearded dragons? How much is it going to cost you? And how much do you feed your bearded dragon? So let's talk about that next. Okay, so bearded dragons are going to need, first and primarily, they are going to need fresh vegetables every day. You want to make sure you're giving them fresh vegetables every single day, whether they're a baby or whether they're an adult. Now, what they eat, what they like to eat, is going to vary greatly depending on how big they are. So young bearded dragons and juvenile bearded dragons are going to want to eat about 10% vegetables every day, uh, typically, and about 90% bugs and protein. Okay, uh, Adult bearded dragons like Rocky, uh, they are going to eat primarily 80 to 90 percent fresh vegetables every day and a lot less protein. So the, here I have some collard greens and this is one of my uh, biggest recommendations for fresh uh, greens. You want to make sure you're buying them fresh. They seem, seem like they keep uh, about five days, five to six days in our refrigerator uh, and then we have to buy new ones. So you can expect to spend probably an American currency, you can probably expect to spend you know, ten probably fifteen dollars, fifteen twenty dollars a month just on vegetables uh, for your bearded dragon. As you see, this uh, these collard greens here are starting to get a little bit, uh, uh, you know, brown and discolored and stuff like that. But they are still pretty fresh, so I can still use those. But tomorrow, I'm going to have to go out and buy some fresh vegetables. Uh, and I switch it up with my bearded dragons between collard greens and uh, mustard greens. Uh, they like, they love both of them, and uh, you know, they work pretty well. But other things that you can use, other uh, fresh greens that you want to use uh, for your bearded dragons that you can use is like dandelion greens, uh, bok choy, turnip greens, and stuff like that. Never use anything that has any kind of lettuce in it or salad uh, because that doesn't give your bearded dragon any kind of nutrients or, or anything like that. But uh, collard greens, mustard greens, I just, I just kind of alternate between those two. Uh, every once in a while if I can find some uh, dandelion greens or turnip greens, I'll give them some of that as well, uh, just to change things up a little bit more. All right, guys, so what I've done is I've actually just torn these leaves of these collard greens up into more manageable pieces. You definitely want to do that for your bearded dragons. Don't give you giving them big chunks of uh, these greens. Uh, and as you can see, I kind of tore it in smaller pieces for Roxy. And you'll also see that I'm not giving Roxy near as much because A, she's not as big. And second of all, her diet doesn't consist uh, of the vegetables near as much as like Rocky. So once you get your uh, greens torn into shreds uh, or pieces like this, you want to go ahead and spray a little bit of cold water on them. And what I do is I use a spray nozzle. You can definitely just put it under a little bit of, you know, a little bit of uh, light water under the sink as well. And the reason you want to spray some water on top of the vegetables for your bearded dragon uh, is it helps keep them fresh longer under the, the lights of your terrarium. And also it's going to help when they eat these vegetables, it's going to help uh, hydrate your bearded dragon. So very important to put some, uh, some water on them first. Now, once you get them over to your terrarium, before you actually give it to them, you want to be uh, dusting these vegetables at least like three or four times a week. Uh, you don't have to do it every day, but probably half the time is what I do. Uh, I dust them in what uh, I call super veggies. And this is a mix of like calcium and vitamin uh, that are really good for your bearded dragon. And I've put the, uh, the super veggies in just like a pepper container that I had washed out uh, because it makes uh, sprinkling the, the powder on their, on their uh, salad a lot easier, the vegetables a lot easier. I call it a salad, but I guess it is a salad to the bearded dragon. And as you can see, Rocky, uh, you would think he, he does love his insects and his roaches that I feed him all the time, but he also loves fresh salad. And you can see that he's getting excited about it right there. So here you go, Rocky. Here you go, buddy. Let's move your bath water back here. There you go, bud. So as you can see, I mean, he's immediately going for uh, the vegetables, he definitely loves vegetables. And he, a lot of times, wouldn't even, you know, touch them when he was young like Roxy is. But now that he's older, he definitely, 90% of his diet is vegetables. Uh, 
Now, I know that a lot of websites, and like the website I recommend, uh, beardeddragon.org, they recommend giving even an adult bearded dragon uh, protein every single day. I'll tell you right now, I don't. I give Rocky uh, protein, like insects and dubia roaches, probably three times a week is all I give it to him, and he seems to be doing just fine on it. So as well, when Rocky was really little, beardeddragon.org has some great articles, and you know, if you go by the articles on that site, you're gonna do just fine. But one thing I read over and over in the forums there was people recommended for a young bearded dragon to give them uh, as many insects as they would eat in a 15 minute period of time, two or three times a day. Well, I didn't even do that. I gave him as many insects as he would eat in a 15 minute period, like once a day. And he would eat sometimes 60, 80, 100 of the dubia roaches. Now, dubia roaches are supposed to be uh, like four or five times more nutritious and you know have a lot more content inside each one uh, than like a cricket because a cricket doesn't have near as many like guts inside and stuff like that it's mostly exoskeleton uh, where a bearded dragon is mostly that gooey stuff inside and offers your bearded dragon uh, they are one of the most nutritious insects or feeders that you can give to your bearded dragon but they are expensive as well especially if you're having to buy them so that's why I started breeding my own dubia roaches and I have videos on how to start your own colony for uh, dubia roaches uh, they're never going to infest your house anything like that they're uh, they don't have a lot of stench they don't hardly smell at all and they're easy to keep in you know just like a big Tupperware tote like this uh, just you want a supply of ventilation top you know a little bit of screen material or whatever for ventilation and they're really easy to to take care of I mean I feed them oranges and like bread and vegetables and stuff like that just whatever I have laying around and they eat pretty much whatever uh, and just keep the lid on them and they will breed as long as it stays about 85 to 90 degrees inside that Tupperware thing which I have a little heater back behind a little $10 heater I bought at Walmart to make sure their temperature is a little bit warmer than what we like it here uh, they will breed like nothing else and uh, be able to supply you with plenty of uh, insect feeders great insect feeders uh, for you for your bearded dragons so that's what I use you can certainly buy whatever you want you can breed crickets uh, crickets I wouldn't recommend for one thing crickets have a tendency to bite bearded dragons if they're left in the tank uh, and they're just not nearly as nutritious as well plus they stink a lot more if you try to breed them so I recommend dubia roaches if you can get them and if you can breed them legally in you know wherever you live so as Rocky continues to eat his vegetables here uh, I would like to say that you never want to feed your bearded dragon any kind of insects that you get outside in your yard or anything like that because they could have parasites or uh, make your bearded dragon really sick. You always want to make sure you're uh, feeding them uh, feeders that you're either buying at a store or breeding yourself so they're not outside exposed to the elements and have all the different kind of stuff out in your backyard that, that could uh, really make your bearded dragon sick. Uh, for example, you know, weed killers and sprays and everything else outside uh, could get on the bugs that you could actually give your bearded dragon and you know potentially kill your bearded dragon and you don't want that so like I say dubia roaches are my recommendation for anybody that's seriously thinking about getting one or two or more bearded dragons uh, just because they're about the easiest they're really hardy uh, you know and they're really easy to raise I mean they're a little bit creepy they're definitely creepier than like crickets or whatever but they never bite either and they smell they don't smell near as bad and they're just a lot easier to breed so that's my recommendation uh, for your bearded dragon another thing too when you go out and buy a bearded dragon before you buy uh, your bearded dragon make sure like I say that you're set up you got your terrarium you got your heating all set up and everything like that but make sure that you're not just going out and just buying like two or three of them right off the bat uh, because you think they're cute because you're gonna have to have a tank for each one bearded dragons are very solitary creatures you want to make sure that you're not putting more than one bearded dragon especially if they're a juvenile or bigger in the same tank when they're babies they're a little less likely to bite and snip at each other but like you would never want to house another bearded dragon in here with Rocky even in a female uh, because they can fight and, and everything like that so be really uh, careful of that all right as you can see here this is what we call Zoomed's Reptivite this is reptile vitamins with uh, vitamin D3 uh, and other vitamins that they need this is what I dust the dubia roaches that I feed my beardies with now for bearded dragons uh, crickets or du uh, dubia roaches preferably if you can uh, other insects that you can feed them is like locust uh, wax worms which would really only be a treat only so every once in a while for like wax worms don't buy them uh, silk worms and butter worms 
uh, can also be fed. But make sure that you're not getting any insects out of your backyard or anything like that. And another thing too is you see me select some bugs here for Rocky. Uh, especially with younger bearded dragons or any bearded dragon, you never want to give uh, them bugs that are distant longer in length than the distance between the bearded dragon's eyes. Uh, the reason being is, again, the small intestinal tract. And if they eat something bigger than the distance between their eyes, or quite a bit bigger than the distance between their eyes, you can go a little bit bigger, but you really want to try to keep it no bigger than the distance between their eyes. Because uh, bearded dragons can get impaction uh, or hind leg paralysis. And either one of those is going to be, you know, it's going to make your bearded dragon uh, suffer some horrible pain. And you don't want that for your bearded dragon. So as you look at Roxy here, again, she's eating uh, smaller dubias, as you can see. Again, really no bigger than the distance between her eyes. Uh, you really want to be careful of that. Don't be trying to give your bearded dragon, like a young bearded dragon, like full-size doobie roaches, uh, or you're just asking for trouble. Feeding your bearded dragon any insects that is longer in length than the distance between their eyes uh, is risking impaction or hind leg paralysis. Uh, and that's, I would consider that animal neglection. So make sure you're not neglecting your animal by trying to feed them too big a prey. Uh, it's a risk you don't want to take. So as you see Roxy here eating smaller dubia roaches, uh, really no bigger than the distance between her eyes, the appropriate size for her. Now, when I first raised Rocky, he was eating as many as he could eat in a 15 minute period, usually once a day, and he got really, really fat. So I wouldn't listen to that advice on uh, you know the forums and stuff like that. I would feed him a little bit less. Roxy gets fed about 20 to 30 uh, Doobie roaches her size uh, once a day and then Rocky as an adult I give him the bigger roaches he usually gets between 10 and 15 adult size uh, Doobie roaches and he only gets those about three times a week now the D3 uh, vitamin powder that I showed you uh, made by Zoomed uh, I cover her dubias at least five times a week out of seven uh, when I feed her her uh, protein uh, dubias and Rocky only gets that powder dusting uh, on his bugs about once a week and as you watch me pet and roxy here she's such a sweet little devil i can't you know tell you how much how great a pets these guys make but there is a cost associated with raising bearded dragons make sure you know ahead of time what you're getting yourself into uh the initial cost of setting up a terrarium uh for each bearded dragon remember that you can't house them uh together they need they're very solitary creatures but make sure you understand the cost of getting the terrarium the, the correct lighting uh, the heat lamp, the, you know, substrate or whatever you're going to use. And another thing to consider is, you know, their diet. Uh, feeding them insects, uh, especially when they're young, can be very expensive. So be sure you're prepared for that if you're not willing to breed your own crickets or doobie roaches or whatever it is you're looking at feeding them. Another thing I want to go ahead and mention is baths. Uh, baths I didn't cover in this video, but you want to make sure you're giving them a good soak at least twice a week. Uh, you know, at very minimum, at least once a week. And when they take a bath, you want them in there at least 20 minutes. A lot of times I try to keep them in there 30 to 40 minutes uh, uh, when I give them a bath. Uh, they need that hydration and it'll keep their uh, skin soft and they're going to, you know, shed their skin and grow uh, as they get older. Even when they're an adult, Rocky still sheds, uh, just not nearly as much and as often. But you want to make sure they have that hydration uh, and when they shed, it's going to be a lot easier on them to shed their skin when they're well hydrated. Never try to help a bearded dragon, you know, never peel off its uh, old skin or anything like that. Never try to help them in any way or you can risk injury. So just make sure that you understand that. Uh, there's other videos and everything else that I've made on, you know, what if your bearded dragon doesn't poop for a long time because that is something that's normal. Uh, what if they act lethargic and, and act weird? There's something called brumation. So I'll provide links to some of these videos down below. Uh, Rocky has more than 40 videos, and watching these videos may help you out as well. Any other questions, I would direct you to beardeddragon.org. They're an excellent source of information. Their care articles there are great, and the forums are full of wonderful people willing to help you out when you just ask them the questions on the forums there. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Be sure you comment down below. Be sure you rate my video. This has been Zach99. I hope this video has helped you out. Take care, everybody.